Well, we all know uh, what's happened to other societies that have attempted to do something different. Uh, though this is what makes our job so much more difficult and why this is, while on one side this is one of the most improbable types of ventures you could come up with, but yet the most important uh, given where we are and where we have to go, which is why I come back to critical mass. The thing that fails all social movements or any organization is fracturing of the movements that exist. So if you can get that integrity on a global scale across all borders, across, across all social systems, and get that harmony there where it's holographic, as we point out, that's just not a fundamental idea. That's because we need it to be holographic. We can't have people in certain positions that if they're removed or what have you, it can't have an effect. So what, in the higher state of this movement, it's really operating as an invisible entity of mass where it's literally unstoppable because there's no heads. It can't be fractured because the ideology is so ingrained. It doesn't matter where people are. It's, it's, a, it's a motion. It's a singular human motion. And there's no government or army or anything that could possibly stop anything like that. It's never happened in the history of humankind, but it's going to have to. Uh, it's going to have to, people have to get down to the basic level of survival, understand that, and develop their values and the social approach based on that simple referent, which we've been so decoupled from. And I think inevitably it's going to happen. I have no idea how much suffering and turmoil might emerge before something like, like, like that occurs. But just to quickly re-answer your question, I really believe the critical mass issue, that's why people say, well, let's try to start a resource-based economy in, in Mexico or, or Venezuela. Do you realize what the corporatocracy would do if someone attempted that? They would be the communist, uh, they would go apeshit with propaganda in any country, just as they do. All the coups and overthrows of any leader that attempts to do anything social on a grand scale. Uh, this system has a defense, as John, John McMurtry calls it, it has a built-in uh, uh, cancerous defense system. That it, and it's not just leaders and governments, it's actually people. The self-appointed guardians of the status quo really want to believe that what they're involved in, even if they're poor and living at the corner of bedlam and squalor, they really want to believe that their system is for them because that's how strongly they identify with it. So there's a tremendous barrier. But again, the biopsychosocial pressures are there. They will continue to inhibit. We continue our work of education. Eventually critical mass emerges. And then all it takes is one big global action to show the strength of this movement in, a, in a, basically a civil disobedience kind of way. Uh, the example I like to use, which I don't advocate, but imagine if 50% of the people in America just refuse to pay their federal income tax there's nothing the U.S. government would ever do. They couldn't possibly. But people are terrified to do that in mass because they don't know the mass could be there. And that's what we have to overcome. And that, once that happens, it's over. I mean, there's nothing that any power establishment can do. There aren't enough people. The military would run away with their tail between their legs if they had the type of global mass that we advocate. So. Um, let's assume for a moment that critical mass has been reached. And what now? You know, I mean, what's to stop us from uh, building the first city of the Venus project somewhere? You know, let, I know I saw your film. I saw you speak. You said it's a financial issue to getting all the resources together. It's very expensive. It's a cultural issue, though. Even if you built the first city, uh, you, it could only be used as an example. It couldn't, people couldn't really live there because of what the comment I just made. Even if a country attempted to do this, they would have to have some massive security measures to stop the, what John Perkins appropriately calls the corporatocracy and the military-industrial complex. We can't keep fooling ourselves about what the military is and has always been. It's there to maintain territorial balance and to preserve certain economic modes that benefit those that can control things. Hence, the West has always done East India Company, Britain, the, the age-old empires. It's just imperialism continues its rotation. And this is why building a singular city, unless it's a test city, unless it works in a certain way to educate uh, which is what Jock's always advocate. That's why he always says we can't just build a city and expect people to live there. Uh, that's, it, there's too many factors that could come into play, uh, not to mention the cost. You really need to utilize resources to do it. But in the end, it's really a cultural transition. It's, as much as we talk about technology, all of this is really a value system transition more than anything else. It also wouldn't be a global system. 
And that it's important to understand that what we're advocating is a global system. It would be a closed community. And uh, we have a lot of people that are involved in the movement that like to, they're interested in, I want something as close to this as I can get right now, and maybe we, I should build a commune, and we should start growing our own food. Or, Well, that's very, that's very different than what we're talking about. But go do that and talk about this. Um, I say if, if your passion is to be with a community that shares the values and, and live, live uh, in, in some sense that's, you know, outside of the, the, the normal way we're getting resources, then please go do that. But keep in mind that we can't achieve what we're talking about until it's a global system and we're off of money and we have those high-tech resources versus low-tech because we really are trying to honor, uh, you know, we're not adding to human labor and, and, and human stress, but reducing. And there have been people that have gone on to those projects who have had a very different experience and thought, this isn't for me, but it's not what we advocate. So uh, I encourage people, like, if you want to get involved with something like that, because we hear that a lot, um, to do that. But, but keep in mind that, it, that we're thinking bigger and we need mass awareness and people doing mass awareness activism to, d to achieve what we're really talking about. I just wanted to add to that. If you were able to build successfully your, the, the resource-based city, let's just say, within the greater system, you're going to run into a lot of problems. Resources that are necessary are scattered all over the earth. Not knowing what's available inhibits the ability to um, perpetuate yourself on your own self-efficiency. Also, in time, if there was ever, and you probably would understand this, uh, any sort of decay of the societies surrounding you, you're going to have to really defend yourself because um, when the grass is, you know, when the grass, say the grass is greener inside, you're invaded. Um, it's a global system because uh, we're accounting for the, all the resources of the planet and all the people of the planet, not just a select few. So.